Hello everybody and welcome back to Ovation of the Seas. We are on a nine night cruise from Hawaii all the way through to Vancouver and we're on our final day, Glenn. Ah, uh, uh, oh, that's so cheesy. Anyway, we're here to talk about food because we've both put on about 50 kilos in the last nine days. So we're on a quantum class, which means the specialty dining is limited um, compared to something like the Oasis class, which has a lot more um, paid for restaurants. And um, on this cruise, we did get the three night dining package, which was more than enough for us. So let's start with Chops Grill. Chops Grill is a staple of Royal Caribbean. You've eaten in Chops Grill a few times. In fact, Glenn knows the menu off by heart, which is frightening. I could actually recite most of the menu from memory. And the weight of the steaks. So. What did you think of Chop Squirrel compared to all your millions of other times um, you've been there? I didn't like it as much as the Wonder of the Seas one. Really? Yeah, I wasn't. I'm, I'm never. I'm not a big Chops fan anyway. Uh, I think steakhouses and other ships are, uh, fleets are probably better. However, right. the venue here is not as nice as the one on Wonder of the Seas, which is out on uh, Central Park area. Yes. Uh, although the menu is exactly the same, so you kind of pretty much know what you're getting with Chop yeah. Squirrel, right? I like the food in Chop Squirrel. I thought the steak was cooked fine. It was cooked perfectly. It wasn't over. The first time we had chops was on our first day. So we actually had a chops luncheon as part of the key. If you haven't seen our key video, I'll link it right in the corner. The key video, we got to have, we got to have chops for lunch when we arrived. It was a limited version of the menu, but the food was not great. It was in the main dining room. It was overcooked or cold. So it, yeah, not great, but. Question, if anybody's eaten in Chops Grill and has had the tater tots, <laughs> what on earth do they serve that was under a potato the top. title of tater tots? That was because, a potato croquette. Yeah, in the UK, that's what we would call a potato croquette. Um, piece of mashed potato that's formed into a shape Bread and it. covered in um, breadcrumbs and deep fried. That's a potato croquette. That is not a tater tot. So if anybody can explain to us why Chops Grill advertise tater tots but serve potato croquettes, I would love to find out. Do you know what I think that is? So because this ship sailed from Sydney um, and they didn't refill on food when they picked us up in Hawaii, I think they run out. Well then I would expect the waiter to say, and by the way, tater tots are off menu today, and instead we have potato croquettes. Which are but black. we weren't told that. They weren't good anyway. Yeah. They were anyway. Good. So yeah, that was Chops Grill. Jake, thumbs down for me, probably a thumbs up for me. Yeah, you. I mean I thought the steak was worth it, but I just think that the sides were not great and the dessert was fine. But yeah, as I say, I didn't really film much of Chops Grill because I completely I was starving. I completely forgot to film it. I was just too busy eating. But, uh, Next, Jamie's Italian. Jamie's Italian. Okay, bit of so Jamie Oliver um, is universally loved. I guess I don't really know. Not in the UK after he Apparently, ruined school. Apparently, but he ruined school dinners for everybody. But anyway, my point being with Jamie's Italian, his brand is uh, used to be on quite a few of the ships of Royal Caribbean, but they are being phased out for um, Giovanni's Table, which is their in-house kind of um, equivalent. Now, I've eaten in Jamie's Italian on land, and I've eaten there and see and I have to say on sea Jamie's Italian is very very good um, I think that the food itself is fresh it is light not too heavy there's this we had so many starters we went there twice on this sailing in fact we went there again last night and I would say if you want a good burger the burger in Jamie's is the best burger on Ovation of the Seas did you have the burger I ate about half of it, yeah. <laughs> because, it's quite big. But we had about nine sides, so, and no, starters, loads of starters, like the meat plank and things like that. It's all very Jamie Oliver, very, very fresh, very nice, 100% would recommend it. The garlic prawns were very good. Yeah. That garlic bread, it was so soft. Oh my gosh, we ordered two of them because it was that good. Jamie's Italian is way better than Giovanni's Table. Giovanni, Sorry, yeah. I know that's not a popular opinion, but it's way better. Giovanni's table, the food was heavy, it was just sickly, too much. I they know. kind of try and advertise it like it's food that your nonna would make. Well, if your nonna's making food like that, honestly, Jamie Oliver's beating her hands down. Yeah, and your nonna needs to go to cookery school, honestly. Yeah, so put, it was a thumbs up from me. Thumbs up? Are we doing that? Whatever. It was good. It was fun. And we ate there twice. Yeah. We used, we used two of the three nights on our three night dining package there, so you know we enjoyed it. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, Izumi is the um, in-house sushi restaurant. It is Japanese food, noodles, and fresh fish. Very, very good food. So we had a sushi and soup. I can't, why can't I We say? had a sushi lunch menu with sake tasting, which was fantastic. It was very good. In fact, he yeah. thinks it was so fantastic, he's quite drunk from the sake as we record this. Uh, <laughs> it was some good stuff. <laughs> Um, but it was really nice. We all sat at a long table and had five courses, different fish, as you can see here, and with matching sakes. And, yeah, I um, think it's called the sushi and sake pairing or something like that. If you see it on your app, book it. Yeah, it's really it, good. I think it was like eighty dollars. Was it eighty dollars? No, it was thirty dollars each. Or okay, like that, yeah. I don't. Know. It was. It was good. Um, but yeah, really worth it, really great. Yep. Um, got to meet some new people as well. So if you're watching this, uh, we had a lot of conversations about people making YouTube content. Do you know what we did? We actually sat with a young couple and it was their first cruise ever. And we've so rarely bumped into people who are first timers. Uh, it was so nice to, to, to get their take on what they were enjoying or what they found kind of strange about cruising so um, yeah yeah that was that was lovely so yeah. big yeah. thumbs up from me again yeah it was really good i don't even know their names um but hi if you're watching this uh, we didn't even mention that we make youtube videos which i thought was quite fun la patisserie which is basically cafe promenade with better cakes and starbucks coffee starbucks Ooh. coffee is you do if you've got a drinks package refresher or anything like that you can get starbucks coffee in there and you do not have to pay extra for it I, there is no Starbucks on the ship. There is so. no Starbucks. So if you've got, a, if you get premium coffee on a drinks package, it's Starbucks coffee, and you can get it in the windjammer, and you can get it down there at La Patisserie. Patisserie, can't say it. La Patisserie. It's the one with the cakes that you pay for, <laughs> and we paid for a cake. Didn't we? we paid for a cake. We had the Oreo cheesecake. And it was. Well, he had it, I had a mouthful of it. It was my birthday, I was allowed to eat more cake with you. And what do you think of it? I thought it was really good. It was very light as well, it wasn't too heavy, great texture, worth three bucks. Fantastic, really, really good. Um, you don't have to pay for cakes, but you can see a distinctive difference in quality between the one you pay three dollars for and the one you're gonna mm -hmm. get from Cafe Promenade across the way. Let's move on to complimentary dining. Let's kick off with Cafe 270. Cafe 270, I ate there a lot because they have the classic hot beef roll in the rosemary and salted bread with horseradish. Oh my gosh, I love that place. The food is so fresh and just lovely. The salads, you had some salads, the salads were good. You had the Cuban, good. which was a wrap. I had the B&B, &B, I think it was called. It was like lots of different meats and cheeses. I ate a lot of crap in that. It's good. If you've never been on a ship that's got Cafe 270, it's similar to Park Cafe yes. on some of the other it's ships. Basically, it's Park, similar Ca Park Cafe in, a, in, a, in, a, in at the back of the ship. What about uh, a, a pretty unique, actually, offering, um, which is... Fish and Ships. Fish and Ships, fish which ship. I think... Fish and Ships. So Ovation of the Seas is the only ship I've seen this on. Oh. I don't know if it's been that popular then. I didn't I didn't see a lot of people there. It's wow. it's it serves fish and chips as you can and, imagine. And and fried uh prawns and also you can get a lobster tail, a lobster roll rather, which um you would pay twelve bucks for or something. But the rest is complimentary. What did you think of the fish and chips? I thought it was the okay, the portion the ship I'm gonna say this now. Whoever is in charge of portioning out the chips Dude, you are so stingy. I can't believe how few chips you get. You could have had two. I did. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, seriously, be generous. Um, also, the fish was fine, but it's, it's kind of like, we've made videos on this channel when we were talking about food ages ago about HelloFresh, and we call it the veg lottery, so you don't quite know how good the veg is gonna be. Well, in fish and chips, you're playing the fish lottery because sometimes I've had a piece of fish that is just beautiful, and then sometimes I've had fish that just looks like it's been dragged out of a bin. So well, I went there once, I had one piece of fish, it wasn't good, thumbs down from me. Great idea, I love a poolside venue that gives you something what is different, with this thumbs but down? I didn't like it, so it's a no from me. It's, okay, one out of five. It's, thumbs a, down. it's a middle. Whatever it, you it want to call it. It's fine. It's a gamble. It's Next, right. what about Cafe Promenade? Cafe Promenade. Have we just done that? One? No, that's the well. No, Cafe Promenade is the is the coffee shop that's downstairs oh, okay. on the 
uh, uh, where well, the retail area is. It's next to Sorrento's, so you get your coffee from Cafe Promenade, but it is not Starbucks coffee, it's just the filter coffee, and they have things like croissants. It's completely complimentary, and it is absolutely fine. There is nothing to say about it that's extraordinary. It's complimentary because you really wouldn't pay for it. Yeah, you wouldn't. I tell you what, if you want to set a benchmark on what the 24-hour cafe is supposed to be, what's the one on Princess that you love? Oh, I don't know. The one... Oh, International Cafe. The International Cafe. They need to just do that because that's... That's what, much better. That is, that's where it's done perfectly well. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that because the queue is so long. But Cafe Promenade, bit of a bit of a miss if, uh, if, if to be honest. But Sorrento's Pizza next door, the pizza is fantastic as it always has been. Although they seem to have taken away from the shakers, they would have like herbs, chili and parmesan. They seem to have taken away the parmesan. Oh, and he moaned about that. I was really annoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah I... Anyway, next, Salarian Bistro. So let, we're gonna whip through these so we don't waste too much more of your time. Salarian Bistro. <laughs> is uh, in the solarium and it is like Mediterranean foods. It's very fresh and breakfast. They have a stripped down version of the breakfast buffet from the Windjammer. We have eaten there for dinner as well in the evening. So yep. that has very much like Bulgari and all that, all that kind of hippie It's Mediterranean stuff. and Middle Eastern. Oh yeah, the, the hummus is very, very nice. It's wonderful. And um, like flatbreads and things. There was baba ganoush and tzatziki and stuff. It was really, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, that, it all just looks like different beige baby foods to me, but it was very nice. It was very lovely. And I had the chicken and I'm always a bit dodgy when it comes to chicken um, ordering it because I always think, oh, if it's going to be dry or if it's going to be under, it's very, very difficult meat to get perfect. And they got it perfect. It was lovely. And I had a lamb tagine. It was absolutely delicious. <sighs> so again, big thumbs up from me for Slayer and Bistro. Yeah. Um, um, okay. The wind jammer. Now, before we talk about the wind jammer, I just want to show you this clip. Question: okay. Wind jammer, yes right. or no? Okay. When when you finish a Royal Caribbean cruise, they send you a questionnaire where they ask you to rate certain things, and I love the wind jammer. I I think that they set the benchmark for what a buffet on a cruise ship should be. It is better than what I had on NCL. It was better than what I had on Sky Princess. And then we went to the Windjammer on Wonder of the Seas. And it was possibly the worst buffet I've ever been. I felt like we're just complaining about everything. There's no possibly about that. There's, it was, I do not know what went wrong. That was what we thought of the Windjammer on Wonder of the Seas. I think I look much better there. You do, you look, on the last one, yeah, you've put on a work, bit of weight since then. Oh, uh, what? The Windjammer on the Wonder of the Seas, as you can see from that clip, we were not impressed. We were bitterly disappointed. However, I have to say on Ovation, it is. it seems to be firing on all cylinders. For the most part, the food was very, very good. They had a different curry every night, and I'm really gutted I missed the keema, but um, they had, the food was, for me, very good. Um, I thought that the bread selection was a little bit limited personally, but that I'm just clutching at, at straws really for that. But I thought they, they had were... really good French fries as well, which yeah. is unusual for a buffet. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were hot. <laughs> they were actually be... really, yeah, they were hot, crunchy, really nice, really good selection. As yeah. Ant said, the curry, I mean, being British, we eat a lot of curry, and the curry selection every night was really authentic, really tasty, mm. as well as all the rest of the usual stuff. So, I have to say, it was a big relief to come on board and find out that wasn't a trend from Wonder of the Seas. That was a one-off. The um, wind jammer here is way better. Way better. So that was good. That was our experience. And it was also good because we weren't really planning on eating in the main dining room, and we haven't. No. We've done a nine-night cruise, and we, we didn't eat in the main dining room once. Um, that's just a kind of a personal choice. I am aware that the new Royal Caribbean menus have kicked off on this ship a few weeks ago, um, and I'm looking at some of the posts on the Facebook group, um, mixed, I'm gonna was, say. Yeah, mixed. I think a lot of people are saying it's really, yeah. they're a lot worse than they used to be. A lot of but... people I've spoken to do not think highly of the food on this sailing either. And I don't know where they're coming from. No, it's really. been good. I think that there's always anomalies where, you know, where you're busy and stuff or your food comes out cold or it's overcooked and you can always send it back. But I think that for us, our experience on the ovation of the seas compared to our last experience on Royal Caribbean was so yeah. much better. 
I, yep, both I, the paid and the complimentary options on this ship have yeah, been really yeah. good. I've been really impressed. So, it, it just for me, it just it's a win for Quantum Class. I think that Quantum Class are doing something right that Oasis Class isn't doing right when it comes to food. But we will confirm that in our Odyssey of the Seas vlog coming later this year. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. That's been all the food on Ovation of the Seas. Mm -hmm. um, we've got another video coming up which is gonna be our overall ship review of what we thought of it and all this and the other. Remember, if you like the video, to like it. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything and it, all it means is we can irritate you a little bit more every other week. And we will see you on the next one. Say goodbye, Glenn. Goodbye, Glenn.